that's a pelvic bones. It forms by three bones junction. It is the iliac bones, ischialic bones, and pubic bones connection. From behind, we have the sacral portion of the vertebra and particular portion of the vertebra. Let's say these three bones again, one pelvic bone and two single bones, together forms the skeleton of our pelvis. If you remember from anatomy, friend, you think that if 75 times you will record and you will have the information, it will make your educational process more effective. So I don't understand for what you do it. Much more better, guys, than you write or than you record something. You make automatical work. I say you it hundred times. Much more better to put your equipment or to listen. Because all this information it is included in your slides. I write it point by point. So I want to think I want to it's not necessary to write everything. You just lose your time. You waste your time. You think your writing is better than my writing? No, no, I watch your, your video. Why? And uh, because I organized them. Why? It is greatly organized in my slides. For example, in your in your uh, exercise book, you don't have the pictures which show for you the specificities. In my slides, it is hundred times much more better organized with titles, with subtitles, with necessary pictures. Why you waste your time? They say it's starting from school years. You start to work in the wrong way. You spend huge amount of the time for some automatic works, for just writing works. Much more better if in time of this writing you will take these slides. If you need even you can print it, no any problems. But we work with this. I imagine how long time so much you spent to make these notes. That is your choice, guys, you know, but just don't forget that we are not the ancient peoples. You live in 21st century, in technology's age. And in technology's age to write or to record something, that is, you know, that is not serious. What is the most expensive nowadays? That is the time. Point number one, time, point number two, information. But it's your choice. If you want it's not, it's not forbidden, you can do it. You can do it, no any problem. Let's continue. Now look please here. This is the pelvis. And as you remember from anatomy, it is split it into two big portions, so-called major or great pelvis and minor, otherwise we call it false. Sorry, great, we call false. Small, we call true pelvis. Remember, once again, bony pelvis contain two cavities. Big bony pelvis, we call uh, false pelvis. Small bony pelvis, or small pelvic cavity, we call true pelvis. Why big one, we call false? Because really, it is part of the abdomen. Inferior portions of retroperitoneal space and peritoneal cavity descended into the great pelvis, otherwise into false pelvis. Why small pelvis we call true? Because it doesn't have communication with the abdominal region. It is separated region. By the way, there are one communication through the connective tissue species, which I say you before, but no any communication with the peritoneal cavity. That's why we call it true pelvis, and it contains organs of the real true pelvis. If inside of the great pelvis we have organs of retroperitoneal space and peritoneal cavity, inside of the true pelvis we have organs of the pelvic cavity. What the borders between these great and between the small pelvis? Look at this. This is this bony line, which I can uh, show for you like the circle. Otherwise, this line we call the terminal line, linea terminalis. How it forms? Look at please. From up to down, it is superior margin of pubic symphys, superior margin of superior branch of the pubis, up to the pectin pubicum. From pectin pubicum, it is continuous by the arcuate lines, which is located in inner surface of the iliac bones. And finally, it is become to the promontorium of the circle. So, once again, I show for you complete bony cycle. Uh, this aperture we call the superior aperture of the pelvis. 
Let's all remember this, it is apertura pelvis superior. This aperture we call inferior aperture of the pelvis. How we draw it? Look at please. Inferior margin of the pubic synthesis, inferior margins of the uh, inferior branches of the pubic bones, inferior margin of the ischiatic tuberculum. From ischiatic tuberculum, it is imaginary line which has come up to the tip of the sacral bone, the proximal bone, sorry. Let's say this is the inferior aperture of the pelvis. Let's say your true pelvis has two apertures, superior, which we call linear terminalis, and inferior, which is being the inferior bordering of the pelvis from the gluteal region, from the perineal region, regions which is located below it. And this is understandable for you. Very well. Now, one minute, we will speak, of course, about true pelvis, because false pelvis we study together when you're part of the peritoneal pelvis. What can I say about true pelvis? First of all, you can see that it forms by the bony skeleton, which I mentioned for you before. And the bones from inside covered by several muscles. First of all, you remember here we have one big apertures, uh, two big apertures. And they forms, can you give me a pen? Yes. They forms by two big ligaments. One ligament which I put below, we call the sacrotuberal ligament. It is started from sacro and it is attached to the uh, ischiatic tuberal. Hey, friend, your nails is not so interesting. Listen to me. Sacrotuberal ligament. Second ligament again from sacrum come to the ischiatic spine. We call it spa sacrospinal ligament. And you can see that between these two ligaments, two apertures is formed. This is foramen ischiaticum major, that is foramen ischiaticum minor. Let's say once again, sacrospinal ligament and sacrotubular tuberal ligament. It is the strongest ligaments of your pelvis. And they border these two apertures. Apertures is huge important. And first muscle which I want to mention, we just covered the foramen ischiaticum major and split it into two parts. Superior inferior, we call it musculus piriformis, as you remember, yeah? Second muscle, it is the internal obturator muscle, which is originated from inner surface of the foramen obturator region. Very important muscle. Again, inside of it, one more canal is originated, which we call alcox canal. By this alcox canal, as you remember, pudental, neurovascular battle, from gluteal region, we come to the fossa rectalis. It is the inferior portion of the pelvis. And supply here the uh, anal portion of the rectum and gives the branches to the uh, genital organs, yeah, for example, nervous pudendus. Okay, next muscle it is the musculus coccygius. Musculus coccygius, which is located in the level of the coccyx. That's a, as you can see from inside, pelvis is covered by several muscles, which is located in the wall of the pelvis. From below, small pelvis, bordered by two muscular structures. From behind, we have the pelvic diaphragm or otherwise we call it anorectal diaphragm. That is the muscles which is surrounded down. So you can see greatly, for example, in this picture, yeah? This is this picture from below, that is picture from above. It's a, you can see two diaphragms here. This is the pelvic diaphragm. Remember from anatomy, it is presented by musculus levator ani. That is the muscle which is lifted the arms during the constriction. And from inferior way, I draw it by the green yellowish color. We have urogenital diaphragm, which is formed again by one mouth muscle. It is musculus transversus perineum profundus. That's a once again. Floor of your uh, small pelvis, as I said you before, it forms by the bony aperture. But this bony aperture covered by two muscles, like my two hands. One muscle surrounded the anal aperture, second muscle for the males surrounded the region of the urethra, for females it is surrounding the region of vagina. Let's say my left hand we call the urogenital diaphragm and it forms by musculus transversus perineum profundus, this yellow green stretch. My right hand surrounded the anal aperture of the rectum and we call it pelvic diaphragm and it is presented by musculus levator ani. Is it understandable for you? Very well. Now, minute attention into this picture. One minute, everybody, look to this picture. What do you see? Some green structure, uh, 
uh, goes from up to down. This is the peritoneum. As you can see, this peritoneum from the walls of the peritoneal cavity become to the floor of the peritoneal cavity. Floor of peritoneal cavity for males and for females is different because we have different organs. For the males, under the floor of the peritoneal cavity, we have two organs. Anteriorly, it is urinary bladder, posteriorly, it is the inferior portions of the rectum. You can see, it, for example, in this picture. As in, that is the floor of the peritoneal cavity. And you can see two organs here, yeah? Anteriorly, it is urinary bladder, posteriorly, it is rectum. For the female situation, another. Instead of two, we have three organs. Anteriorly, it is the bladder, posteriorly, it is the uterus with the vagina, and posteriorly to it, we have the rectum. Why I mention about it? Because for the males, as you can see, one depression will be formed in the floor of the peritoneal cavity. Mm -hmm. We call it excavatio recto vesicalis, deepest place for the male's peritoneal cavity. For the female situation, another, instead of one, two depressions is formed. Anterior one is not so deep. We call it excavatio utero vesicalis, between uterus and the vesicle. Posterior one is much more different. Why posterior is different? Because from behind, peritoneum cover not only uterus, but it is cover also the cervix and posterior wall of vagina. From in front, peritoneum cover only the uterus and doesn't cover the cervix and vagina and pass exactly to the urinary bladder. Let's say, remember, please, for the females, the deepest point is that one, excavatio recto perina, otherwise we call it the duple sphinx. And if inside of the female's peritoneal cavity there are any liquid, transudative or exudative, doesn't matter, it will be accumulated inside of them. And as you remember, we uh, say that physically you can detect it per vagina, for example, by the palpation of the posterior wall of the fornix of the vagina, if it will give the prolapse you will understand that from upwards it is pressed, or by touchable tumors, or by the liquids, yeah, which is accumulated in the duplex space, and which is made the pressure of these mentioned structures. But I want to attract your attention now to another structure. Another structure which is shown here by this blue color, which is located under the uh, green one. What is it? It is endo-abdominal tissue. As you see, endo-abdominal tissue cover the bones of pelvis, cover the muscles of the pelvis. And inside of the true pelvis, it is split into two terminal branches. Look at please. Branch number one cover again the walls. Branch number two cover the organs and cover the organs. That's why like, this is parietal and visceral branches of pelvic fascia. What is the pelvic fascia? It is continuation of endo-abdominal fascia. Without any bordering, and abdominal fascia can continues from retroperitoneal space into the pelvis region, and into the true pelvis, it is squeezed into two terminal branches. Parietal branch cover the walls. What does it mean of walls? It means the bones, which I mentioned, and the muscles, which I mentioned, inside of the pelvis. Visceral one cover the organs, which we have inside of the pelvis. A little after, we will come again to this question and we will speak about it. But now let's speak about one important uh, question, which is called division of the small pelvis. You know, this small pelvis is so complicated and so important for us that from topographical point of view, we divide it into three main compartments from up to down. Now imagine that I provide in two horizontal planes inside of the small pelvis and split it into three floors, upper one, middle one, and lower one. According to what I made this division? Do you write the names of present and absent persons? And don't forget after the class to write for me the marks of your uh, individual works and marks of your control work. Now look here, please. What is the upper floor? Maybe the tension looked to me. As I show for you, the floor of your peritoneal cavity 
little bit descending to down because it forms the depressions. Mm -hmm. That depressions located inside of the small nodes. That depressions mentioned for you organs of the pelvis which from upwards covered by the peritoneum. It is so-called extra peritoneum form of the coverage. That's a most upper floor of the pelvis we call cavum pelvis peritoneal. Otherwise, peritoneal floor of the small pelvis. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that the peritoneal cavity continues inside of the pelvis. It means the lowest floor of the peritoneal cavity from upwards, for example, like that one, from upwards, cover the organs which is located from pelvis, inside of the pelvis. That's why this is the most descending portion of the parietal peritoneum, which is called here depressions. What we have inside of this floor, for the meals, it is the urinary bladder. By the way, by the way, then urinary bladder is empty. It is cover extra peritoneum. You remember from anteriorly we have the red yes. pocket, yes. yeah? And from posteriorly we have depression for males between the vesicle and the rectum, for females between urinary bladder and the urine. Then urinary bladder filled by the urine, yes. it is ascended to upwards and it's covered by the peritoneum from three sides, from above, from right, and from left. From extra peritoneum, it's become to yes. the peritoneal stretch. Except it, in this first floor, we have for the females all uterus. Uterus, it is intraperitoneal structure. More of this. Behind of the uterus, peritoneum is descending to down. And it is covered not only uterus, but also fornix and cervix of the vagina. Remember it, please. That is from in front, no. Only from the end. That's why like posterior depression is deeper than anterior depression. For the males, uh, laterally to the urinary bladder, peritoneum cover uppermost portion of ductus deferentis and seminal vesicles, but not the prostate, of course. For the females, it is covered the transverse ligaments of the uterus, which is located from two sides of the uterus, as you remember. And finally, posteriorly, we have upper one-third of the rectum, which is intraperitoneum. Middle third is mesoperitoneum. That's an upper one-third located inside of peritoneal cavity. Middle one-third located inside, of, sorry, upper and middle thirds located inside of peritoneal cavity. Because, you know, intra mesoperitoneal organs, it is peritoneal organs. Lower third, which is extra peritoneal, from upwards covered by the peritoneum and located in the second floor. And this is understandable. Let's say remember that is floor number one, which we call the peritoneal floor. Floor number two, we call the extra peritoneal. This is one minute look to me. Which is, friend, when I say look to me, I mean so look to me. What the borders of this floor? From upwards, it is the terminal portion of the peritoneum. From downwards, it is the diaphragms of the pelvis, which I mentioned before, yeah? Posterior pelvic diaphragm, anterior urogenital diaphragm. What we have inside of it? We have organs of pelvis which doesn't cover by the peritoneum. For females, it is completely all vagina. For the males and females, it is the urethra. For the males and females, it is the inferior third of the rectum, which is located next to peritoneum. It is the inferior portion of the seminal vesicles. It is the prostate. It is the biggest vessels. It is the biggest nerves, which is doesn't cover by the peritoneum, and which is located inside of the second floor. Now listen me attentively. Inside of this second floor, as you remember I told you before, your pelvic hinge divided into two terminal branches, the parietal and the visceral branch. And visceral branch covers the organs of second floor, which doesn't have the peritoneal coverage. And it forms the capsules for that. But what is important, now look please, like my white coat, which is covered me, doesn't fuse with my body. Between me and this uh, clothes, we have the space. Like this, and the visceral peritoneum, which is shown here by interactive line, yeah, which is covered the organs, 
doesn't fuse with the wall of the organs. If you will look at that, you will, you will see the narrow space. yellow space, which is located between black interrupted line and the wall of the organ. This species, it is visceral, loose connective tissue species. And we call these species by the term in para. Paravesical space, paravertical space, parametral space, paraprostatical space. That's a para, it means surrounding space. Let's say, remember, please, now you find how in the second floor of the pelvis we have formation of the visceral connective tissue spaces. Once again, organ is covered by the visceral layer of the peritoneum. It is doesn't touch to the organ. Between visceral layer of peritoneum and organ, we have para loose connective tissue space. Otherwise, visceral loose connective tissue space. Now what we need attention into the picture. Parietal layer of pelvic tissue, as I say, you cover the walls of the pelvis. That is the bones and that is the muscles, yeah, which we have in the pelvis. More of this, it gives two sagittal sectors, which is traverse inside of the pelvis like this. Look, if I will take hold it, please, in that way. If I will put these two hands in the sagittal direction, it will show for you the sagittal sectors. Now look to me. From anteriorly, they fuse to the medial margin of foramen obturatorium. From posteriorly, they join to the sacroiliac joints. Mm. So once again, mm. septa, which is started from the medial margin of foramen obturatorium, and which is finishing the level of the sacroiliac joints. Mm. One more structure I want to mention, and then we will become to parietal loose connective tissue spaces. It is a dead structure which you see. For the males, it is located between urinary bladder and the rectum. For the females, it is located between the uterus and the rectum. Mm -hmm. We call it aponeurosis peritoneum perinealis. Otherwise, by the author, we call it denonville fascia. What does it mean? Denonville fascia has huge big importance. Now, imagine that above me, we have not the protrusion, but we have depression which is the excavatio of the peritoneal yes. cavity. Yeah? And the biggest excavatio for the females, mm -hmm. it is the recta uterine one. Yeah? For males, it is recta vesicle, just once. Now look, to give for this depression the deepest position, there are the special faster, which is joined to it from down, and the inferior will descend it to the pelvic diaphragm and fuse with the pelvic diaphragm to give depressed form for this uh, Okay. And it is located strongly in frontal plane. If previous two structures located in sagittal plane septus, this structure located in frontal plane. And we call it then obvious fish. Now you can find simply how the parietal species is formed. Parietal species form between visceral and parietal layers of pelvic fasciculum. By the way, don't forget that sagittal septus also belong to the parietal layer of pelvic fascia. We have the implication. Look at this. First one, we call paravesical space. Paravesical space located between visceral and parietal layers of the proper of the pelvic tissue, and it is located strongly in front of the urethral gland. Second one we call a retrovesical space. You know, in the picture it's not so good visible, but in reality it is come up to the denominal. Why? Because between these septas and between the visceral layer, there are the narrow, they fuse to each other, but between them there are narrow channels. For example, by direction of the vessels. And generally this space communicated up to the denominal fish, and we call it retrovesical fish space. Of course, for females, it is surrounded uterus also. For males, just from urinary bladder, it is become up to the anterior wall of the rectum, yeah? up to the denominal tissue. Next one, we call the retinal rectal. In front of the rectum, space is not so good developed because it is attached to the denominal. But behind of it, we have the retinal rectal space. And finally, the biggest parietal species, it is located between sagittal septus and between parietal layer of peritoneum. We call it right and left lateral parietal loose connective tissue spaces. So finally, as you can see, we have two non sorry, we have three non-pairs, single and 
one pair species, yeah. Yeah? once again single species, it is pre-vesical, retro-vesical, and retro-rectal. Pair species is right and left lateral, parietal, those connected tissue species. What you should know about each of these species, point number one, content. Point number two, communication. My time is short, I don't know how much I will give you, uh, I will uh, explain it now for you, but let's start. For example, space number one, which is called the pre-vesical space. What we have inside of it? Generally, we have loose connective tissue, we have lymphatic nodes, and we have the anterior pelvic vessels. For example, pudental vessels, which is supply the genital organs, which is give the branches to the genital organs. Which communications it has? Now remember, please, all parietal spaces communicated with nearly located visceral space. Why? Because vessels and nerves from parietal space perforated perforate visceral pasta and come to the organs. It's like, which visceral space near of it? Para vesical space. It's like we can say that para vesical space and pre vesical space, they communicate to each other along the vessels and nerves. What another communication is there? From an obturatorium, you can understand that by foramen obturatorium, obturator vessels and nerves come to the lower extremity. Yeah? They supply the upper portion of the tire region. Of course, along this aperture, th this space will be communicated with the lower extremity. Of course, you understand that a little bit up to this space, we have the inguinal spaces, inguinal canals, but along the vessels and nerves, this space is communicated with the inguinal canal, and we can have, for example, spreading of abscess, yeah, from this space into the inguinal canals, or vice versa. Like these guys, everything I write here, look, for example, all communications, they say you can simply find all communication for all spaces and study. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to speak, and let's come exactly to the last compartment of the pelvis, which we call cavo pelvis subcutanea. Let's say, look here, please. For the pelvis, we describe three primary floors. Subperitoneal, so cavo pelvis peritonealis, cavo pelvis subperitonealis, and cavo pelvis subcutanea. As you remember, subperitoneal pass up to the level of the diaphragm. There is located last one. Below the diaphragm is up to the skin. Mm -hmm. And this is understandable. Let's say, look, all three compartment borders. First one, peritoneal. Upper border, it is linear terminalis. Lower border, it is the floor of the peritoneal cavity. Second compartment, upper border, it is floor of the peritoneal cavity. Lower border, it is diaphragm. Third compartment, upper border, it is diaphragm. Lower borders, it is the skin. Third floor of the peritoneal cavity, otherwise we call fossa ischiorectalis, because that is the fatty tissue which is surrounded from all the sides, the anal aperture of the rectum. Anteriorly, this fat is not so much good developed, posteriorly, it is very good developed. And you can see it has triangular shape or superiorly, it is bordered by the diaphragm, which you can see here, it is musculus levaterale. Inferiorly, it is bordered by the skin. From the sides, you can see it is the ischiatic bone, yeah, which is covered by musculus obturatorius internus. Important clinical space because inside of it we can have inflammation of processes. It is fistulas, which is usually communicated with the rectum and which is called paraproctitis. Important inflammation of process, you must treat it in the future about surgery or these problems we will speak after. Now remember this division and remember these compartments. Only one point I don't explain for you, it is communication of each space. Please read and study itself in that way. Do you have any questions?